Hi, this video is about the multiple standard additions methods. If you'd like to learn about why we do this and also to choose which type between constant volume and variable volume, please see my other video entitled Comparing Concentration Standardization Methods. But if you've already realized that doing a multiple standard addition is what the question that you're trying to solve is asking, or is what you need to do in the lab, then this video is for you. I'm going to talk about how to plan a multiple standard addition. Then I'm also going to go through example data and calculations for both the constant volume and variable volume types. So the general planning for multiple standard additions basically takes two steps. The first step is to decide how much of an overall increase in intensity we want. And typically it's between one and a half times and three times the original sample intensity. This requires you to estimate what your original sample concentration is or to measure the original sample intensity. Um, and then guess how concentrated it is that you know how much to add in order to get three times more signal. And you can estimate it by doing an external standard calibration curve, um, although you've probably realized that you have matrix effects, which is why you're doing standard additions. You could still use this as something of a starting point or a ballpark estimate. You could do a spike recovery, and that's your first point of a single um, standard addition, so see that other video for that. Or maybe you know something about your sample, you just have an estimate of an order of magnitude range of how concentrated your analyte should be. So you need something to start with here, otherwise you're gonna be doing a lot of guess and check, which is a possibility, but it'll take you more time. The other thing is that this overall increase in intensity of one and a half to three times, you want to have split up among three to five different additions during this multiple standard addition approach. So first example will be variable volume. To plan a variable volume standard addition, you might want to know just briefly what it is. It means you start with your original sample, you add a small concentration of a constant, a small volume of a highly concentrated standard, and you keep adding that small volume of the highly concentrated standard over and over again, and therefore the volume slightly increases with each addition being called a variable volume. So let's suppose we have 10 mils of sample available to us. You take a portion of it, you measure it using your instrument, and you get a signal of 0.253 arbitrary units. AU is arbitrary units. So we decide that we're gonna go for the high end. We're gonna triple our signal to three times, and tripling that yields 0.759. You should check and make sure that that number is still within the range of your instrument. And we know that the signal is probably linearly proportional to concentration. So to triple the signal, you need to triple your concentration, which is where having an estimate of your original concentration comes into play. So let's say that so using some method, we decided that our concentration of the sample is about 10 ppm. We don't know for sure. It could be 20, it could be five, but this gives us a rough place to start. So with an estimate of 10 ppm originally, we decide to triple it to a total of 30. To go from 10 to 30, of course, that means we have to add a total of 20 ppm. So our next step in the planning of the variable volume is that we've decided to raise the concentration by 20 ppm. We have to have a concentrated stock standard. Um, and so we have a thousand ppm analyte in this example. And we have to decide on a volume. This can be totally arbitrary, how much of your unknown sample you're going to add to. Um, it should be enough that you can measure it accurately but it should also be so small that you still have some sample left over. So I told you on the last slide we had 10 mils. Here I'm spiking five milliliters of it because what if I make a mistake, I'd like to have some left over. So C standard is the thousand PPM, that's concentration of the standard, and our initial volume of sample is five mils. Next, we have to assume that the spike won't dilute the sample very much. And so that is the basis of this variable volume addition. You're going to have small dilution, so you're not changing the tape matrix a lot. And now we can calculate the total volume of stock to add. This is using the M1V1 equals M2V2 dilution equation. And so on the left-hand side here, we have the thousand parts per million of the stock standard. We don't know its volume that we need yet. And then we know that once that little bit of the concentrated stock has been diluted to the five mils of sample, it will raise the concentration by 20. And so when you solve this, we get that you need 0.1 milliliters of total spike to add in order to reach that 20 part per million increase in our five mils of sample. To do a quick reality check, which is whether this 0.1 mils is going to be a large dilution relative to the five mils. And it turns out that that's only a 2% dilution. 
And so you're doing okay on the assumption that your spike isn't diluting the sample very much. Now, since we've decided the total amount of spike that we need, we're gonna divide that up into several intervals. Um, it's pretty convenient to divide 0.1 mil by five different additions, each of which will be 0.02 mils or 20 microliters with a microliter pipette. And so V standard now is going to be increments of 0.02 mils. Example data for this. What you have to do sequentially is to read the original five mils of sample. You're gonna get this signal in case here, 0.253. Add your first aliquot of 0.02 mils of the concentrated 1000 ppm standard. Read the signal, 0.365. Another 0.02, so now you have a total of 0.04. Read it, another 0.02, and so on and so forth until you've added all five intervals. Now, with multiple standard additions, the math to actually get your original concentration is going to be different based on each kind. So I'm going to walk you through right now the math for this variable volume standard addition. You're going to create two different mathematical um, items. One's going to be the x-axis and one will be the y-axis. So the first one for your x-axis is you're going to take the concentration of your standard, the 1000 ppm, times the volume of the standard at that particular sample divided by the initial volume, the five mils here of your sample. And so when we do that, that's going to become our x-axis. The original one with no spike because V standard is zero will be zero ppm. Um, you can see here that the units will be the same units as your standard units. Um, the example worked out for our first spike is the thousand ppm times the 0.02 mils of V standard at that particular place divided by the five mils of initial volume. And so we've basically added 4 p.m. if you're considering it being that original volume of the sample. And you would do that same calculation, but for space, I just show you the results here going on down the line. And this is what's going to be plotted as the x-axis of your curve. Now for the y-axis, you're also involving yourself with the fact that you've kind of expanded the volume a little bit here. So your signal, your measured signal is S, and then you're gonna multiply that by the total volume. And the total volume here is the five V zero and the particular V standard at any particular sample. And then divide that by the volume of the original sample. And so for your Y axis, um, for that very first one, because you don't have any added standard, that new formula ends up producing your original signal of 0.253. And then for the rest of them, it's slightly adjusting that signal based on the small amount of dilution that your standard added. Um, and so you can see in the second row, 0.365 is your raw signal, 5.02 mils is the five mils of the sample and the 0.02 mils of the standard, and then dividing it by the five. And you go on down the line. So once you've put that into a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel, you can make this plot. And you can see here, x-axis is C standard times V standard over V zero, y-axis is signal times the sum of V0 and V standard <clears throat> divided by V0. And you're going to get a positive linearly increasing line where the intercept, your original sample with no standard added has a real positive reading, okay? So you know you have some analyte in that sample, it's just you didn't know how much. And now you've essentially built a calibration curve in your sample. And so we can extrapolate back to that x-intercept and solve for the x-intercept, which is where y equals zero. And that'll tell us what the concentration is of your analyte in your sample. So to do that, you're going to take that trend line equation, set y equals to zero, rearrange it and solve for x. And that will come out to be a negative value, which when you look at it, yeah, okay, minus 8.29 looks like where that x-intercept would be. And now what you have to realize is to take the absolute value of that. So concentration of analyte in your sample here was actually positive 8.29 because that x-intercept should have been the zero of a normal calibration curve, which would make your sample be at plus 8.29. Um, if you have a more modern version of Excel, by the way, you can go into the settings for the trend line and choose forecast backwards and then tell it the period. So in this case, the period would be minus 10 to forecast backwards 10 units on the x-axis. And that's a nice way to get that trend line to extend and visually show you where the intercepts should be. But really you should use the formula of the trend line to calculate that. Okay, 
So for variable volume external <laughs> variable volume internal standards, that X intercept is the actual analyte concentration in your original five mils of sample, 8.29 ppm in this case, which hey, turns out the estimate of 10 ppm was not too bad based on our prior knowledge. Okay, next example, planning constant volume multiple standard additions. What we're gonna do here is again, decide based on our original information. We have more sample available, 50 mils, we take an aliquot, we measure its absorbance, in this case, maybe it's UV viz spectroscopy, you get 0.716 um, absorbance units. If you're going to triple that, you're going to get an absorbance of 2.148-ish, and it's possible that that might be above the spectrometer's linear range. So is that okay? Well, it actually happens to be, because in this case, we're going to dilute the sample when we're using the constant volume approach. You dilute your sample with standard and with water, until all of the samples are diluted equally. So we have to pick a total volume and a sample volume. For example, 10 mils of sample and 25 mils total volume should be okay. Um, maybe I should use a little bit less, but we'll, we'll try 10 mils. And so V0 is 10 mils. V final, because they're all going to be diluted to that amount, is 25 mils. Now we have to get, and again, an estimate of our sample concentration. I think maybe this sample is about 2 millimolar. Now we have to calculate the diluted estimated sample concentration. This is M1V1 equals M2V2, where you had two millimolar in that 10 mils of sample, but then that's going to be less when it's diluted to the 25 mils total volume. And so that leads to 0.8 millimolar expected sample concentration in the diluted sample. Now it's that concentration, the diluted concentration that we want to triple, but before we triple it, we should check and make sure our absorbance should be okay. And so we're going to do the same kind of dilution of the absorbance. And we realize, okay, well, it's going to absorb less because it's more dilute. And it should be about 0.29 absorbance units. And if we triple that, we're going to get around 0.86. And that's probably in the range of the spectrometer. Okay. We just decided to dilute 10 mils of sample into 25 mils total volume. And we think that'll give us about 0.8 millimolar diluted sample concentration. It's that 0.8 that we want to triple. And so if we triple it, that'll be a total of 2.4 millimolar, which means we have to add 1.6. You go and you look at what standard you have available. We happen to have a standard of five millimolar analyte, so that's C standard. And again, you use M1V1 equals M2V2 to figure out what volume of the original five millimolar standard on the left side here you need in order to produce an addition of 1.6 millimolar in that total 25 mil final volume. And when you do that, it leads to eight mils of standard in total to give you 1.6 millimolar increased concentration. Now, I told you earlier that we divide that into somewhere between three and five standards, and here it's going to be convenient to choose to add this in four different portions. Um, each of them will be two milliliters, which is easy, but also we need to reserve some sample for a no addition. And so if we have four portions of standard added, and we have one where you have no standard added, that is five samples, five times 10 mils of sample, it's going to use all 50 mils of our sample. So V standard will be in intervals of two mils. Okay, there are two ways to plot this data and come to the answer. This will be your first one. Your first way of doing it is to have the volume of standard plotted versus the signal. And so here's the table, um, of what those volumes of standard would be in the two milliliter increments, always have that sample where you have no standard added, and then the signals that we measured. These can be five separate samples made and then five separate readings made. You don't have to go in sequence because they're separate solutions. The other thing is they all reach that final volume of 25 milliliters. So you should be using a 25 milliliter volumetric flask. You should add 10 mils of your initial sample to all of them using a 10 mil pipette. And then you should add the standard using tech pipettes, volumetric pipettes as well. And then you need to dilute these samples to the total 25 mils using distilled water or whatever the matrix is of your volume of standard. That way they all have the same total volume, constant volume standard additions, and <laughs> they have the same matrix as each other. Okay, so what do we plot? Well, the plot is x-axis, just volume of standard added in milliliters. Um, and your y-axis is the signal that you mentioned measure. So it's an easy plot to make. 
Again, we're going to work with the x-intercept. And so we plug in y equals zero for that trend line. We solve it. And in this case, we come up with a negative 4.09 milliliters. Remember, the intercept has the same units as your x-axis. And what this is telling us is that our analyte in our unknown sample was the equivalent to 4.09 milliliters of standard. Well, we know how much was in 4.09 milliliters of standard because we can multiply that by the concentration, the 5 millimolar of the standard. And we can set that equal to the original 10 mils of our original sample. And so that works out like this. You see on the left side of the equals sign, the 4.09 mils, which is our negative x-intercept, the concentration of our standard, which is 5 millimolars, and then that's set equal to V0, which is 10 mils of sample here, times concentration of analyte, which is our unknown that we're really interested in. And when you solve that, it leads to 2.045 millimolars. All right. Now, the other option you'll see gives you the exact same answer, but in a slightly different way. So this is our same example data. The only thing that's changed here is now we're going to plot the x-axis as the final concentration of standard added. And so you'll see that I've added another column to my table here, which is concentration of standard times volume of standard divided by final volume. For the first one, you have no standard added, so that's going to be zero. And for your second one, you can see it's the five millimolar standard concentration times the two mils volume of standard added divided by the 25 final milliliters. And that gives you 0 0.4 millimolar units or concentration here because the volume units canceled each other out. You can carry that down. And when you create the plot now, it's that calculated unit on the x-axis, which is essentially telling you concentration of standard final, right, after diluting the, the standard to the F, and you're still plotting on your y-axis the signal. And you guessed it, we're working with our x-intercept. So plug in y equals zero, solve for x, and that in our case gives us negative 0.818 millimolar. You might recognize this as being pretty close to our estimated 0.8 millimolar in our diluted analyte solution. In fact, what this is telling us is that this x-intercept, the negative value of that, is the concentration of diluted analyte in our measured solutions. But of course, it's diluted. And what we care about is the original solution. So again, M1, V1, M2, V2, we put that on our left side with our 25 mils final volume that it resided in. And we set that equal to say, A, what was the concentration of analyte CA in the original V0 of 10 mils of sample? And alas, that comes out to be 2.045 millimolars. So you see that both ways of plotting this constant volume standard addition on your x-axis give you the same result. It's really up to you which one you want to use. I hope you found this video helpful and good luck with your standard additions.